I'm Sarah Hardy and I make weird things out of food for a living. I'm going to share some of those with you. Today it's the raw turkey cake. Originally designed to surprise my family at Christmas, this guy is carved and then covered in a bright buttercream and then a layer of marzipan so that the buttercream bleeds through the marzipan skin. If you like this, then subscribe, click the bell. You're gonna like some other things I'm making. Okay, let's get going. So first of all, I bake three sheet cakes in the very tin that I'm gonna display my turkey in. This is not a cake for a fancy cake stand. You've gotta shove it in a roasting tin. Next, you wanna to go to my website, sarahardymakes.com and download the free templates there. They're gonna make life so much easier. I did a lot of looking at raw turkeys to produce these. They're to scale and they have all the different parts that you need to cut out on them. They also give you an outline to help you carve to because it's not always easy to see what it might look like from the side, etc. So here I am cutting out with the templates, just taking my sheet cakes and layering them up. I actually forgot to use my own templates on the first two layers, which made life a bit more difficult, but then I start carving. On my website, I've also got pictures step-by-step step of what the different stages of carving look like and from different angles that might help you. So once I'm happy with him, I'm gonna drench him in more sugar syrup. This is an orange one for this uh, particular recipe. And then there he goes, it's looking all moist now. Back in the fridge for a chill, a crumb coat, back in the fridge again for a proper basting with purple and pink buttercream so that it will bleed through that marzipan layer later. I'm just carving the thigh, the drumsticks, no, the thighs. I uh, did them in situ. I probably could have done it flat on the table and stuck them on for a little bit more ease, but this is a lovely tool I've got here. It's a grapefruit knife, so it's serrated and curved. It's really good for getting into cavities and creating quite naturalistic curves, so go get one. This leg and the other leg will also get crumb coated and chilled and then buttercreamed. And then actually a stage I forget to show you here is that I make a little white bottling chocolate leg. So this turkey is going to sit with its legs crossed. There you go, you can see it. It's got one leg in that picture right now. Um, the other leg will go on after it's covered in marzipan. So here I've made lots of tiny little dots of marzipan and they are going all over the turkey in a grid-like pattern where the feathers have been plucked out. So once the skin is on top, these will show through as bumps to emulate where those feathers went. Now there are about four to 5,000 feathers on a turkey. Just do as many as you can do without going completely insane. He's been chilled again and that's activated all the colors. That lovely punchy color is gonna come through the marzipan skin later and look like blood. It's great. Next, I'm gonna roll out a large sheet of marzipan, extremely thin. This is skin, we want it skin-like so all that color comes through. I use rolling mats, they're great, but if you don't have them, it doesn't matter. Just roll it out on a table and use some white vegetable fat like margarine as your release agent, but just not powdered sugar because it will dry the marzipan up. And we want our marzipan to be nice and supple and skin-like. All the oil from the almonds makes it a wonderful material to use, so we don't want to soak all that oil up, we want to keep it in there. So this is my favorite stage, the covering. It's where you start to get to really fiddle with things with your hands and carve and stuff. I'm patting it, I'm lifting the skirt up and pressing it round, I'm poking it, I'm stroking it, <laughs> doing all sorts. And to be completely honest, I probably spend about two hours doing this stage just because I love it so much. You know, put some good music on and get stuck into the work. You don't have to drive yourself completely mad doing it for hours, just do as much as you enjoy. It's supposed to be fun. I pretty much just use a ball tool, a dresden tool and my hands. You don't need anything else. It's all about sculpting, really. I pinch it, I poke it and the lovely nature of the marzipan means that if I make any mistakes I can just squeeze it back together or even take a tiny piece in my hands and squeeze it flat and press it on and then just blend the edges and all sorts of mistakes are turned into wonderful happy accidents that way. So I'm just popping him up, tucking his skirt under his butt and then pushing him back down again. Then this is the giblet cavity here and I'm just going to pinch the marzipan to 
create a lip so that it looks like it's more of a cavity because that really is a gaping hole in there and, and you want it to look cave-like. When he's finally done and I've fiddled for enough hours and primped and preened him, then he is ready for his second leg. So this is another piece of modelling chocolate with a skewer through which I'm going to just lay on top and do a rough model. Really, I didn't put much detail into the shape of that. A sheet of, a little bit of sheet, and you can see I'm pinching the edges so that when I put it on, it's got a nice organic edge to it and not a cut edge because it blends much more easily. The heat from my fingers is going to help blend that marzipan as well. And then um, shaping it in, shaping it on and around the, the top of it. It's quite important to get this looking cool because it's one of the focal points of what is essentially just a big dripping pile of flesh. The knuckle bones at the end here make a, a nice piece of variety. So once those flappy bits are all nicely shaped and everything, I'm going to put two little bits of white modelling chocolate in to act as the knuckles. These are great details and we want them to be white modelling chocolate because it will resist the paint differently to the marzipan. It's a nice contrast. Another nice detail is the flap that covers the hole where the neck has been lopped off. I just take a piece and roll it flat, make sure that the edges are thinned out nicely, sort of concertina it in on itself a little bit and then place it where I think what they do is they take a piece of the back probably or something and stretch it over where the neck was so that you don't have a gaping hole there. Another finishing touch is a little bit of butcher's twine tied around the two legs nice and tight and then snip it short. The hole that you can see there isn't a problem, I just use a little piece of marzipan to cover that up. Love this stuff. Gorgeous. And on sarahardymakes.com, that cake is literally just left overnight and the colors bleed through. This guy had a photo shoot within an hour, so I had to paint him to get him ready on time. I'm just using two colors of gel colour and they're the same colours I use to dye my buttercream actually. It's a claret and some kind of a blue. Watered down with cooled boiled water and then really randomly putting on patches, using more water and washing them into the skin so that it soaks right into that marzipan. I use a little bit of red inside the creases of the joints to emphasise the depth there and then it's time to glaze. My glaze is an orange syrup because of my lovely orange cake I'm using just to enhance that flavour and it really looks gorgeous. It drips and it takes some of the red colour and drips in the bottom of the tray and it looks like blood. It's so grotesque, I love it. So there he is, perfect. Christmas and Thanksgiving are going to be extra special this year. <laughs> Please make it and take pictures, I would love to see what you do. Thank you for watching my first ever video tutorial, I hope you enjoyed it. Click subscribe, hit the notification bell, I will be back soon with some more weirdness.